following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Hello and hotel. This is Brother Kimmick coming at you with another episode of Black Gumbo. You can tune in to listen to us at Our Heart Radio, iTunes, and Spreaker. We're brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. And you guys can reach us also at blackgumbo at gmail.com. And we're going to jump right on in into our subject matter. And I know you guys have been looking around at 2021 and man, what in the world is going on? We're right in the middle of a global pandemic and people are taking to the streets across this great country and in different parts of the world to show and express their disgust, their heartbreak, their anger, their disdain, and their pain for what has indeed been another assassination of a black man named George Floyd in Minneapolis by a cold and callous American law enforcement agent. We were just talking about how Brother Amar Aubrey was lynched down in Burnswick, Georgia by two white wannabe cops. Just days before Brother Aubrey, we were trying to comprehend how in the hell did cops just happen to go into the wrong apartment in Louisville, Kentucky and gun down Sister Breonna Taylor. They had a no-knock warrant. You guys, you hear that? These are just a few of the many names of people who have been killed at the hands of an American law enforcement agent to name all the names of people of color who have been killed or either brutalized by this name called the system, which is the criminal injustice system, just because of the color of their skin, it would take me on the mic for six to nine months, 24 hours a day, calling out names. We are still moaning the life of Emmett Till. We're still moaning the life of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. We're still moaning from long, long time ago. You guys understand what I'm saying? COVID-19 may be deadly and it may be a killer. But racism makes COVID-19 look like child's play. Over the past week, we have witnessed what happened when justice is denied. We're seeing a rebellion unfold in America. You guys, we, we tried. We tried to warn them, guys. We tried to do this thing peaceful. Brother Kaepernick, he tried to bring attention and awareness to Polish brutality and systemic racism. He tried to do it peacefully in a way they always tell us, you know, well, don't do it that way. Uh, it's got to be a better way. I'm looking for that right, one right way. I hadn't, nobody has ever been able to guide me into that. What's that one right way that we're supposed to protest? I thought that if you did it peacefully, where nobody would get harmed. And if you can do it, then people would pay attention. Well, not America, not in this country. You have to do it loud. Hey, not my fault. You got me? Because they turned a peaceful protest, they deflected the issues, and turned it into an issue about a flag and an anthem written by a racist, no good white man who wanted to see black people dead anyway. As great as this country can be for people of color, we sometimes find ourselves living in what seemed to be a long behind nightmare. What I mean by that? In America, regular people can do things, just simple things that people do every day, and they take it for granted. But for people of color, these things can turn into a death sentence. And what I mean is, like driving while black, walking while black, sleeping in a car while black, riding your bike while black, barbecuing in a public park while black. Because a lot of times it's not just the police, it's other racist white people that harasses us. Bird watching while black. Working on your delivery job while black. Visiting friends and families in apartment complexes while black. Just sitting in your house eating ice cream where police can just walk into your house and kill you and claim she thought she was in her house. Or just plain ordinary breathing. James Baldwin said... To be black and somewhat woke in America means to be in constant rage. 
Now that we have the world's attention and America's attention, now we must focus that rage. I mean, funnel that rage, that anger and that pain into actionable steps. Do we have steps? Yes, we do. After my commentary, I'm going to let Brother Wilson tell you exactly what our plans are. We do have a plan of action, and it's going to take some sacrificing. All we have to do is think back to 1955, what our ancestors did when they sacrificed with the bus boycott for over 100, over 381 days. They sacrificed, but what happened was they brought the bus system to their knees. We think about it from back then. They didn't have a lot. We have a whole lot. So our fat sacrifices don't have to take as much because when you guys hear the plan, you'll understand we're already doing some of the stuff. We just have to di- redirect the way we're doing things. Guys, we do not have the resources or a military or any kind of force to fight America with brute force. That's not what the plan is. Plus, we don't want to destroy America, and we don't want to harm anybody. We have weapons that are greater than you guys can imagine. And one of the things about our weapons is they won't cause any physical harm to anybody, and nobody has to lose their life. One of the things that great Malcolm X said was that it's not that we're outnumbered, but we're out-organized. So now we have to organize and we have to plan and strategize. And Brother Wilson is going to lay this plan out for us. And it's not really a hard plan. And it can be beneficial to all of us. And one thing about this plan, if you guys email me at blaque at gmail.com, I'll tell you how you can make money off this plan that we're talking about. Besides, we have some of the best weapons that you can imagine. The weapons that we have are better than bullets, tanks, or guns. And and with these weapons, like I said, nobody will get physically hurt and nobody has to lose their life. life. I know you all are wondering, what in the hell kind of weapons do we have? Well, I'm going to tell you. We have our great minds and our dollars. The late, great Dr. John Henry Clark used to always say that if black people ever did anything in unison and together, even it was even if it was wrong, would change the history of the world. And right now you're seeing not just black people though, you're seeing people from all over America, all walks of life, rich people, rich white people whole white people you see Mexicans you see Asians all of them are coming to the battle cry all of these people are coming to the battle cry not just here in America but all over the world all over the world do you guys understand that this is happening all over the world I'm going to let brother Nuri Muhammad give you some perspective on the power that we have because right now we're spending 1.3 trillion dollars in the u.s economy 1.3 trillion dollars in the u.s economy that's trillion with a capital to t you guys that's trillion with a capital to t that's how much we're spending in this economy and we're on board to spend 1.5 by 2020 it just hit the 8 minutes and 46 seconds. That's the length of time that that dog was on our brother's neck. 8 minutes and 46 seconds. But I'm going to let brother Nori Muhammad give you some perspective on our spending power and how we can use it as a weapon. Well, the, the lecture, financial coonery, what does that mean? Well, it is, uh, it is an analysis of the kind of bad spending habits that we've adopted, uh, in particular as black people in America. We are, unfortunately, we participate because of the high stress level. We participate as a people in something that I call retail therapy. And, and we blame 
as a people, we blame the white man for 95% of our problems, but still not spend 97% of our money with him. We, 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 we are the leaders in unnecessary spending. You know, unnecessary spending is buying stuff you don't need with money that you don't have from people that you don't like to impress people that you don't even know. So it's a, it's a sad state, uh, that we have brought in last year, they're estimating in 2018 that we brought in $1.3 trillion as black people in America. Out of 226 nations on earth, that makes us the eighth richest nation on the planet. We brought in $700 billion more than Mexico, $600 billion more than Spain. Yet Spain has 46 million people and a 208,000 square mile land mass, and they're able to provide for themselves as an independent nation. Mexico has 131,200,000 people in population and 771,500 uh, uh, acres of land that they're maintaining with, 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 with less than half the money we have. So what this says is for all of these nations to have half in income, half in money, but double in independence. We got a lot of dollars, but we need some more sense. I hope this give everyone a perspective to see how huge, how big, and how much power we actually have. Because Brother Wilson from Wilson Academy is going to come, and he's going to lay out this plan, and he's going to show us how to make our money start making sense on because like we said earlier, we are already spending the money anyway. So all we have to do, and I keep reiterating this, is redirect how we spend it. We live in the greatest country, as they call on earth. And guess what? This is our country also. Our ancestors' blood and sweat and tears is in this land. We have just as much right than anybody else on this planet to this land. We don't want to harm our country and we don't want to harm our citizens. That's why we want to do this in a peaceful way. And that's why we've been trying to do this thing in a peaceful way. We just want America to work for us like it works for the late dominant society. That's all we want. Listen, black America, we have the power, we have the will, and we have the resource to do what is needed and to what is necessary. Like I said again, and I'm going to keep saying it, we already spending the money. We just have to redirect how we spend it. And the most beautiful part about the plan that Brother Wilson from Wilson Academy is going to talk about is that I can show you how to make money off of this particular plan. You can email me at blaque at gmail.com. That's, a, I mean, blackgumbo.com. That's blaque gumbo at gmail.com. And I can tell you and show you ways that we can benefit our people, our community, and this nation because we built this nation. We're the engine to America. We've always been the engine to America and to the world. We have always been. However we move is how the world moves. The fashion that we design, the world moves to that. The music that we create, the world moves to that. The art that we make, the world moves to that. We've always been in, in America. I want you to go to Brother Wilson's website. He will give you that in this message. And download the plan. It's a two-part plan. It's an easy plan. And I really can't, I would be hard pressed to find anybody that won't agree with this plan because it's a simple plan. It will take some sacrifice, but it's not really hard. The sacrifice is not going to be that much. Like we said, our ancestors in 1955 made great sacrifices with very little. We have a lot, so our sacrifices are not going to be as hard. Okay? Please go to the website. Please listen carefully to what Brother Wilson is saying and we have to put this plan to the implementation immediately immediately not next week not the week after that but we have to start immediately because if we want change 
We have to be the change that we want. We have to start changing what we do and how we do. We have to start changing how we think. And the other things that we have to do, we have to start with these babies. We got to get these babies trained up from the beginning so they don't have to come and start from behind like we did. We got to start training them early. We got to start teaching them about financial literacy. We got to start teaching them personal responsibility. We got to train them up early. All right, here's Brother Wilson. You guys, it's been great. Hotel, and we all have to fight the power together. But guess what? We don't have to use bullets. We don't have to use tanks. We don't have to use guns. We can fight the power a different way, and we will be successful. Hotel, Brother Wilson, coming up. The riots that have taken place all over the defy life. Welcome to the Defy Life Podcast. Join JR, Thomas, and Al as they take on topics in sports, politics, current events, family, and more. Insightful, hilarious, always unique. New episode every Wednesday. Powered by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Listen at defylifepods.com and everywhere else your favorite podcasts are available. If you're not rocking with Defy Life, what's your life about? The reason you don't see Jewish people being murdered by police is because the Jewish community can provide economic consequences. They own things collectively. They're well invested in the media and the law. And they've built a strong community by focusing on exclusive internal growth and wealth building. But when members of the black community are murdered by white officers or vigilantes, we peacefully protest, focus on whatever election is upcoming, and ultimately, there are no convictions for the criminals. There's something that we missed about how the civil rights movement was effective. Protesting was just the beginning. It was to unify the people and bring attention to the issue. But the next step was always economic action, boycotting, investing in our communities. Then that economic action is what forced legislation. The reason our efforts continue to fail is because we first of all keep asking for change instead of forcing it. But secondly, because we keep skipping a critical step in the process. So what do we want? Well, in the short term, we demand justice. In the long term, we demand reform. But we must be specific if we are to hold our nation accountable. So we demand three things. One, we demand convictions and equitable and appropriate prison time for all officers involved in the murders of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and all parties involved in the lynching of Ahmaud Arbery. Two, we demand legislation that ensures independent review of public safety officers. And three, we demand a modification to the standards by which officers can be prosecuted. I'm sure you've heard people say, if you want change, get to the polls. Now, I'm not suggesting voting is useless, but the reality is voting will not solve our problems. In fact, we cannot allow ourselves to become distracted by political affiliations. The only way to get the change we seek is to show strength both economically and physically. So first, let's address physical strength. It is both irrational and un-American for us to continue to be met with force and not respond in kind. This is why we need all able black Americans to exercise their constitutional rights and legally acquire a firearm. Perhaps Ahmaud Arbery would be alive right now had he been able to defend himself against the thugs who lynched him. And under Georgia's stand-your-ground laws, well, he would have been within his legal rights. To all my gangbangers, my bloods, my crips, GDs, folk, everybody, I'm asking you to help us protect our communities from the white supremacist groups who would harm us. You are already armed, and you're not afraid to die. I hope that you see fit to call a truce and unite against a greater common enemy in order to protect our children, our mothers, our sisters, aunties, and grandmothers. Now we must address how we fight economically. America doesn't particularly care about black life. If it did, we wouldn't still be facing what we're facing right now. What America does care about is black dollars. So we have to start speaking America's language. Effective immediately, we will only buy food from black-owned restaurants. 
This does not apply to grocery stores as we don't feel there are enough black-owned grocery stores nationwide at this point to accommodate the initiative. However, there are many grocery items you can find on sites like WeBuyBlack.com. Now, our black-owned restaurant initiative means that you will need to avoid many of your favorite restaurants, but you will discover new black-owned favorites. And you must ask yourself what's more important. Understand that this is only phase one of a larger plan. We will implement phase two in the weeks to come. But this is something that everyone can do. So what's the point? And why will this work? According to both Nielsen and the CDC, black people eat more fast food than anyone. By diverting our billions of dollars, we will accomplish two things. One, change is not free. Supporting only black restaurants keeps our money in our communities, money we can ultimately leverage to create the changes we all want to see. And two, it uses our money, money we're already spending anyway, to create powerful billionaire allies. These companies will do what is necessary to get our dollars back. And if that means helping us to meet our objectives, well, then that's what they'll do. There are a few important notes to make when concerning this plan. This is not a boycott. We are not punishing white businesses. We are simply consumers who are making a choice to exclusively support black restaurants in the strategic interest of justice and reform. Please note that we are exclusively supporting black-owned restaurants, not minority-owned. The terms black and minority are not interchangeable. So, to my Chinese, Korean, Arabic, and Indian restaurant owners, we have nothing against you personally. But if we don't do this now, there will be none of us left to buy your products anyway. If a franchise location is owned by a black person, eat at that location exclusively. We will not harm our own people. There are websites like eatblackowned.com that you can use to find black-owned restaurants in your area. But I'm confident that once everyone learns of our initiative, they'll let you know how to find them. We will not support non-equitable services. We will support black restaurants that offer the quality and service we deserve. And if we have a negative experience, we will not generalize and say, see, this is why I don't support black businesses. We will simply express our concerns to the management. And if we so choose, we just won't go back to that particular restaurant, just as we would behave with a restaurant that isn't black owned. This is not a one-day event. Did you know that the famous Montgomery bus boycott lasted over a year? 381 days to be exact. It takes time and consistency to have impact, just as it took time and consistency to implement the racist constructs we are fighting. We will continue with our strategy until our demands are met. At times, this will not be easy. You will be tempted to stray. But please accept that there can be no change without sacrifice. A brief message to white Americans. We don't hate you. We don't hate America. We just need it to work for us in the same way it works for you. Please stop saying all lives matter. Saying all lives matter is like one house in a subdivision is on fire. Fire truck arrives and you ask the fireman to douse your house with water, even though it's not on fire, because your house is important too. We've been asking for equality for hundreds of years now. Please process that. Understand. We're done asking. This word you see on my shirt is ukurua, is Zulu. It means fight. Black people, I need us to know that we are bigger than slavery. Our existence didn't begin when we became useful to America. We have our own continent, our own African culture, our own independent history. We are better than begging to not be murdered. The time has come for us to fight, and now we know how. Now, this plan cannot work if people don't know about it. So if you do nothing else, it's important that you share this post or the link to this post on all your social media. And whenever you mention the plan, please use the hashtag HowWeFight. You can find a hard copy of the plan at thewilsonacademy.org. Remember, hashtag HowWeFight. Share the post.